Let's uh, let's give uh, Miss Shanette, Sister Shanette, just a let's welcome her up here. Let's just believe God with her. Is it on? Okay, I'm on now. All right, yay! I I'm a grandma, so I have to have my glasses. But let me come down here real quick and get my book. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. It's an honor to share the Word of God. It's always an honor to share the Word of God. And um, uh, Anthony told me just a little bit about y'all. Thank you so much for coming. I am very uh, honored that you would come and be here today. I grew up Methodist, Got the recording and uh, my grandma uh, played the, uh, the organ for many, many know, years so in Bismarck, mine. Missouri, and so it's about the size of this town. So. Or a little smaller. <laughs> I was talking to her about uh, if you knew where we came from. <laughs> you know, uh, my mama come from Frank Clay, uh, Missouri, and I think maybe the population maybe is 300, something like that. But anyway, we were talking and just, you know, I, I got out yesterday and um, said, I smell the grass. It's awesome. <laughs> We don't get to smell that in Dallas, Fort Worth area. It's all concrete, you know. So it's um, it's one of those things, you know. Um, as I was uh, just going over my notes and stuff, um, uh, you know, when you have some a special speaker in, and uh, especially, um, you know, sometimes we work in different offices. You know, Jesus, he he was all of the fivefold ministry. He he could do it all. You know. Um, and he was anointed uh, with, without measure, really, is what the Bible tells us about him. And um, I uh, feel like today and tonight, uh, I don't have any idea what's going to happen tonight, but I do know that my husband's coming, and so that could be scary for some because uh, he's pretty fiery. He's I married a fireball on fire for God, and so um, I didn't know, um, you know, that you could uh, encounter the things that you can encounter with the Holy Spirit. But, man, I tell you what, God can change you in a minute and just five minutes or, you know, one minute with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. could change your whole life and direction. And uh, that's kind of what happened to me and my husband. And uh, we've got praying parents. His his mama prayed for us, and we got uh, saved uh, and delivered, actually, after our first year of marriage this year. We'll be married 39 years. Well, and uh, I always like to say that I was bequeathed at birth because I'm only 39. But, um, you know, uh, that goes over well sometimes and sometimes <laughs> not. <laughs> you know, it's hard to imagine <laughs> that uh, that uh, I have four grandchildren, but I have four grandchildren. I'm so excited about that. God's, they're truly gifts from God. And uh, I... Uh, uh, I think the older you get, the more you learn how to appreciate things and how to appreciate. And so uh, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate what you're doing here in Big Sandy. You know, the gospel is to be preached into all the earth until the end, and then the end will come. But I'm going to tell you, uh, just come in here. Uh, I just got uh, on a trip back. I'm not into my message yet. He said I could talk to you for just a minute. Um, I just got back from Israel to uh, about three, four weeks ago, and um, several aha moments. Um, but one of my aha moment was on the Sea of Galilee. It was at the St. Uh, Peter's Church. Uh, it's a Catholic uh, church there, and uh, a lot of different denominations have pur purchased different lands and, and different sites and things. And so St. Peter's uh, Church is there, and it's where um, Jesus told Peter, he, or asked Peter, says, you know, do you love me? And he said, well, Lord, you know I love you. He says, well, then feed my sheep. And, you know, he asked the question, he says, you know, do you love me? And he says, yes, Lord, of course I love you, you know, feed my sheep. And so uh, they have a little statue of Jesus, you know, praying over Peter. And, and so after we got to see everything, you know, and, and, and you're a bit overwhelmed because there's a lot of history there's a lot of Bible stuff, and you just don't even know what you're taking in. You know, you're just uh, you're overwhelmed. And the day before, I think it was the day before, I went to the gates of hell, which that's another story. But there's really literally the gates of hell, and it's right in between Lebanon and Syria. It's quite 
interesting. But anyway, so I was taking all this in and so, and thinking about how they just, you know, they were on boats and they walked and, you know, and so here I was at the foot or at the, the Sea of Galilee and the big giant, like a big giant rocks. I mean, it's, it's really quite pretty. And I was looking out and I knew because the day before I'd been up there that the mountains that I was looking at was Syria. And I had just a thought for just a second that I wonder how impossible it must have been or the thoughts that the disciples had to go into all the world and preach the gospel from that standpoint. You know, there was no cars. There was no motorboats. <laughs> they had, mo they had, you know, men working, uh, power, but, and how, and, and how the fact that they did it. And now I'm standing here as a product of that. Do you know that we're all here because somebody spoke the gospel to us? It was just so incredible. And at that moment, and I'm, 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 I'm not very old, but, you know, I'm up there. And I decided that, you know what? There's nothing that's going to stop me to do the plan and purpose of God for my life. I can finish my course. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep walking and I'm going to keep moving and I'm going to keep declaring the glory of God. Hallelujah. So I just I just wanted to share that with you because I it just gave me such encouragement to think because I'm going to tell you, looking at that big giant mountains over there and that sea right there was quite an impossible task. And so I'm thankful that they obeyed God and amen or else we wouldn't be here. We're a product of that. So. Um, I just uh, am so thankful. Wanted to share that with you. But today, I, I want to speak a little bit more. Uh, yesterday, uh, thank you for showing that clip. That was that was awesome. I'm never wearing that dress again, but awesome. Um, <laughs> I had stripes on. It's not very good on TV. <laughs> I didn't know that that was going to happen. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you open that for me, please? Um, so to. Uh, so yesterday, or the little clip that you saw, was a um, a prophetic word for this house. And so every church has a candlestick. We know that, right, from studying in the book of Revelations, you know. Uh, uh, and every church uh, or work is uh, started with an apostle or, you know, a pastor. Um, and, you know, the Bible actually calls them angels that... You know, God has set, and God is the one who sets them in their place. And it's not an accident. It, it is on purpose, and God, he sets them in their place. And so, uh, especially here with what you guys are doing and, and, and just a new pastor and new, it's new. Everything's new. God's changed the inside of the building. He's changed the outside of the building. Everything's new. Hallelujah. And so with that, uh, in Book of Revelations, the, it talks about how it's time to prophesy again. It's time for you to prophesy again to many people, many nations. It's time to prophesy again. we got to know what time it is in the Spirit. We need to know that. Because this doesn't happen just to come, you know, I, I'm not here to be your pastor with the, 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 the daily living message. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I love what Anthony said the other day. He said, you know, I preach until I'm done. He said, I, I, I asked him, did you come to have a devotion? You know, your 15 minute devotion, or did you come to hear the word of God? I said, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to use that. <laughs> you know, cause really we only get you one. We only get you for one day a week. Hallelujah. How do you know you, what you're supposed to be doing? If you're not paying, I mean, on just a little bitty 15 minute snack. No, 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 no. We got a plan. There's a plan and a purpose that God has for this area. There is a plan and a purpose. And he's drawing people. He's drawing people. And God is saying that I believe that there is coming. Del Gentry prophesied that there is coming a great revival. It's going to start on the campuses of our colleges. Because there's there's men and women who they they have not grown up with, with family like I've grown up with. They don't have a mom and daddy. They are looking for love and they are looking for something that's real. 
Hallelujah. And they are looking for a genuine relationship. That's what they're hungry for. And I'm telling you, there's coming this revival and God is raising up men and women that are radical for God. And they and they're going to be to the where it doesn't matter what denomination you are. It is going to be like a, 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 a fire just sweep through our country. Because let me tell you something. We have sown too many seeds over the sea, over the seas. Hallelujah. We have sown seeds and we have sown seed for a, a great harvest, a great revival to start and to happen. And, and what's going to happen is, is, is people are going to get touched by the spirit of God. They're not even going to know what's going on. And then they're going to be rushing to churches and saying, what has happened to me? I've, ha I've heard too many people tell me they've got saved in bathrooms. They've got saved in and, uh, you know, at the bar. And they don't know what to do, but they know they've had an encounter. They know I, I've had an encounter. Someone's got to talk to me. Someone's got to teach me. You know, in Romans it says, you know, how will they know unless someone is sent? How will they know? So today I want to talk to you and I, and I want to charge you, this church, I want to charge you that a door of utterance to be opened and I want to talk to you a little bit about that, a door of utterance. So a door, of course, obviously, opens up an office. So we have offices in the body of Christ. There's an office of the pastor. There's an office. He's the pastor. We honor and respect the men of God. And, and people in church want to, I'm sorry, this is ugly. But people in church want to bring what they are in the world into the church. I'm sorry, Mr. CFO or Mr. CEO. When you walk into this church, there is a person who's in charge. And we are to honor that and respect that for the office that he holds. And let me just tell you that, quite frankly, it's none of your business what his hours are. Because when you're a pastor, you're 24-7. We don't get to go to the lake just any time. As a matter of fact, we go on vacation and we're on vacation and we have to come back because someone died. Come on. Do you have to ruin your vacation? I'm just saying we honor, we respect the office. He does things that you don't know nothing about unless it's happened to you. Then you're thankful that the pastor loves you enough to take, you know, come back and, and comfort your family and. Be with your family and love on your family. Come on. So we got to get that right. Because when we get that right, God can move. I'm going to tell you, God can move. Amen. And so um, so to open the door of an office is to, to give you access to the office. So, so we are charged to be responsible for the pastor, his office, that he is able to speak the word of God as he ought to. Amen. We have a responsibility. And so, um, so I'm just going to go through this real quickly here. Well, I don't know. I, I, he told me there's no clock in here, so I'm not used to that in Dallas, Fort Worth. You know, if you're not, you got to, boom. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so we want to be able to speak as we need to be able to speak. We want our pastor to be able to speak as, as he should speak, not just to us, but to the atmosphere. Because, see, it's bigger than you, what God's called you to. It's bigger than you. It's bigger, okay? And so Oral Roberts said this thing in his book. He has a book. Uh, it's called Seeing uh, the Invisible and Doing the Impossible. He told the Lord, he, he has this little excerpt. He says, I never again will I speak from just information alone. The needs of the people are so great that I must have the anointing. And he said, God, forgive me for going out with just information. I need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So, so even God, not only is he, he dealing with us, but he's dealing with the pastor. Come on. And once God deals with us and we act accordingly and the God deals with the pastor and he acts accordingly, let me just tell you something is going to happen. Explosion is going to happen. So when we speak out of the office... Uh, it's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, what is, I don't know who the, who's over the federal reserve right now. I can't, I can't think of his name. I used to green some, but something used to be anyway, but you know, when the federal reserve guy comes out and speaks, everybody listens. I mean, and, and believe me, they, they listen closely. There's some people betting their whole everything on what he says. Well, how much more should we be listening to the life and the power and 
of, of the word of God. How much more should we pay attention to that? I'm going to tell you, I would more pay attention to that because I'm going to tell you where the glory of God is. The gold and the silver are. So I'm just come on, you know. So anyway, we, we know that there's people that but he speaks from an office. So when we recognize that and we understand that the pastor, God has set him in his place, he's speaking from an office, then we need to pray that a door of utterance would be opened to him. And so it's really interesting because I've had some people in our church for a long time and I say that, that word all the time, a door of utterance. And she's like, I, don't, I didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> I understand. And uh, but an utterance is just the ability to speak and articulate what God is saying. It's 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 to be able to uh, communicate in an effective way. And so um, so when a pastor, an evangelist, and a prophet is able to speak from their office, it can affect everyone. It can affect the economy. I know for a fact that one time uh, we were in Alexandria, Louisiana, and the air base just just closed down. And, uh, you know, that's pretty devastating for an area. And uh, our pastor just decided, you know what? We're just, what we're going to do is we're just going to call industry in here as a church. Well, you know, there was people that, you know, thought he was crazy. You know, but then there's those people that want to hook up. But we just like, you know what, pastor, that's right. Let's speak to that. Let's let's call industry in here. And so we began to prophesy. We began to speak it. And every Sunday, you know, we just like what you, you had up here with just, you know, I'm a tither, just, you know, proclaiming that. He began and we began to proclaim that. And I want you to know that now they have an international, they, uh, they have a, a, a fantastic international airport in, Alex, in Alexandria, Louisiana. I mean, I'm just saying. The, the industry has come in there, think, you know, but what, what happened was is that we allowed the, our pastor to operate from his gifting, operate from here. And listen to me, there's authority, God given authority, God given. I mean, I want to touch that. That's some serious business there. Come on. God given authority. So I've seen that happen. So when, um, when, so when you see, um, um, so anyway, here's where it says here, when a pastor or, uh, is able to speak out of his office, it can affect everyone. In uh, second, uh, or first Thessalonians 5.17, it says instructions are given in 18 and 19 to don't quench the spirit and don't despise prophetic utterances. So what happens is if we don't understand, because sometimes he's talking to you, but sometimes he's talking to the principalities and powers that of darkness that are holding things back. Sometimes we are prophesying to things that need to happen. And God says in the, in the scriptures that he gives his angels to watch over us, that they hearken to the voice of the word of God. But what they are doing is that when we declare that a spirit of prophecy poverty is broken in this area when we begin to declare that listen to me strongholds have to come down Amen. and so when we do that and we prophesy that hallelujah we that sit on the other end of that it says don't despise that prophetic utter utterance Ma meaning don't say well that's not going to happen here mm -hmm. i love you pastor Jeanette it can happen here. It can happen here. It, 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 it is happening here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on. Why not? Why would we want to say doom, despair, and agony on me? No, 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 no. God is for us. Who can be against us? Come on. We can change a city. We can change a, a, a nation. We can change a state. Come on. One person, one person can put a thousand to flight, two, two thousand. Come on. We got, we got thousands that will be put to flight right here. If we just come together in unity and understand that the prophecies that are given, hallelujah, they're for a, an appointed time for a plan and a purpose to come. It, you know, God says that we go from one degree of glory to another degree of glory. There's steps to this thing. Come on. There's steps. And we all want to be, you know, it's kind of like when I first got married. When I first got married, I was so young, I didn't know anything. I just went to the grocery store and bought stuff like my mama had. And guess what? I come home and I looked at my husband and I said, <laughs> I went to the grocery store and 
and then our groceries were supposed to last for two weeks or something like that. I said, I don't think I bought enough to last five days because, you know, I bought the ragu and, I, you know, I, I had to learn about the white boxes, you know. You remember that? Okay, that dates me. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, so um, so we need to understand that there is a, a uh, that we want to have a prophetic utterance. We want to have that, and we can see in the services way uh, uh, some people act towards their pastors. So we don't want to just say, "Well, that's oh so and so." Instead, we want to know that he's a gift from God to us. I always protected my children. You know, I worked for the pastor, so I knew everything. I knew his ups, his downs, you know what. And to be honest with you, he'd make me mad on a regular basis. But I never took that home to my kids because I knew that one day he may, he may have a word for them. He may encourage them. He may speak to them. And I didn't want to ruin that. I wanted I wanted that to be open. I wanted to to be careful. So we love Pastor Mark. You know, my kids love him. And oh my goodness. They just would, you know, and if he was to tell them anything, they would just take it right that it was right from the mouth of God. How wonderful is it to have a pastor in your life that can sow into you spiritually? I mean, that is amazing. It's wonderful. It's a gift from God. But not just that for you personally, it's also for the house corporately, you know, so we want to be able to do that. So uh, in First Thessalonians 2.13, it says, and for this reason, we also constantly thank God that when we receive, uh, when you receive from us the word of God, the message, you accepted it, not as the word of men, but of the what the word really is, the word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. So the do the door of utterance is what grants us access into the office God has called us to. When you speak from that office, you're able to change people's lives. And you know, we all can be able ministers of the gospel. We all can. That this can all come on all of us, but especially needs to be available in the house of God. So in Colossians 4, 4, it says, with all this is what um, he says, praying for us also that God may open unto us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I'm also in bond. So Paul's saying, if Paul needed people to pray, how much more do we need somebody to pray for us? Every pastor, every ministry that has a speaking part needs to have someone praying for a door of utterance. Amen. When the door of utterance is open, it opens the windows of heaven. It, uh, there is a great, uh, Paul said, there is a great effectual door, but there's many adversaries. Remember he said that? Hallelujah. And that door, the door of opportunity can be opened. The devil wants to slam the door. So what we have to do is pray that a door of utterance is open, that doors of opportunity are open. Come on. Because God moves on men's hearts. You know, he could move on somebody's, he could move on General Motors' heart to come here and build a factory. He could move on Toyota. He could move on Honda, whatever. I don't know. I, I can't think of any others right now. But, you know, he can do that. Come on. Hallelujah. We don't have to live like we're living. In Revelation, it says the door of the Spirit was open, and it came right from the throne of God. He said, and God will say in the Spirit, and John took off, un, and he said unmistake, He said it was an unmistakable experience. <laughs> Hosea said there's a door of hope. I love it. You know, um, we, we hear John o Osteen, you know. He was trying to talk to his critics, and he said the best I do, he says what I do best is I give hope. I'm a dispenser of hope. And other people want him to be like John Hagee and, you know, teach the book of Revelation. Well, you know, he said that God didn't call me to do that. God called me to be a dispenser of hope. And I love him. But I know that my denomination, they'll say, oh, the ooey gooey love, you know. No, 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 no. He's a dispenser of hope. Come on. Hallelujah. In Hosea 2.15, it says, and will... Uh, and I will give her her vineyards from thence and the valley of anchor of for a door of hope and the valley for an anchor of the door of hope. And she shall sing there in all the days of her youth and as in the days when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Do you understand? God said he's going to give you a valley as an anchor. Going to give the valley, the vineyard, 
where the produce is, where the jobs are. It's a hope. You know, um, then over here I've got a couple of uh, things here. It says, um, 2 Thessalonians 3, 1, it says, Finally, brother, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Be glorified. Mark 16 says, confirming the word. And so Jesus, when he says that the signs and wonders will follow you confirming the word, you know, Jesus approves of that. <laughs> we just need to know red letter, you know. So we need the Holy Spirit to show up. And we need the doors to open up to the supernatural. One, trans, one translation of this scripture says that, um, that the word of God may speed on. Philip's translation says to go forward unhindered. Williams translation says that it may prove its glorious power. It may prove its glorious power. Ephesians 18 says, Praying always for me that an utterance may be given that I might be able to pray as I ought. Hallelujah. I've got so many notes here. Revelation 10. Just This is just, I'm trying to get it to where you can see. But Revelation 10 says, He took the book from the angel, from the angel's hand, and ate it and swallowed it. And it was sweet as honey in his mouth, but once he swallowed it in his stomach, it, it, was, it had embittered. Then he said, You are to make a fresh prophecy concerning many people and races and nations and language and kings. I'm not sure if you guys know what's really going on in uh, America. I've been privileged to be uh, involved with some ladies that um, are involved with um, Brother uh, John Hagee. And they uh, are uh, daughters of Zion. They pray for Israel. Um, and CNN doesn't report this. Okay, CNN doesn't report this. But when President Trump was going to make, um, wanted to declare Jerusalem the, the uh, new embassy, you know, that was voted on 50 years ago, I think, or something, or I don't know. I don't know all the history, but it, uh, quite some time ago. And, and we've never done it. It's never been done. I can't remember what president did that. And so we didn't do it. And uh, so uh, I guess he's got some advisors around him. And so he decided to have dinner with John Hagee. Do you all know who John Hagee is? You've heard of John Hagee, right? Okay, so John Hagee is in uh, San Antonio, Texas. He's a pastor of a, of a, a, big, a great work there. He's been there like, you know, I don't know, the last 40 years, whatever. But he specializes in end times. Or you know that's what he pre and his books are on, you know he uh, he's he had book on the four moons and you know he's he's just incredible. If you if you ever want and he'll have the whole you know history up behind the screen, you know I mean he's just he's pretty smart <laughs> and uh, he he'll just he goes to the book of Revelation. He talks about Israel, talks about the prophetic, what's going on in Israel, you know all this. Thing. So he's just a a great man of God, but he's a he's a an authority really on the scriptures for that, and so he got invited to the White House to have dinner with President Trump, and he uh, President Trump said, "I need you to tell me why I should make Jerusalem the you know move the." and recognize Jerusalem as the capital and move the embassy, the United States embassy, to Jerusalem. I need you to tell me why. So for the next hour, John Hagee told him why. He said, President Trump stood up, looked me in the eyes, shook my hand. He said, thank you very much. He said, previous presidents have not kept their promise. He said, but I'm going to keep your promise. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this promise. And so he did it. Okay, I started thinking about that. Do you understand that all of John Hagee's, his whole ministry, even though how great, that he was preparing for that one dinner? Amen. 
Come on, that one dinner. That one dinner. See, sometimes we don't know why God wants us to do a certain thing. But he could be preparing you for something that just happens. Just like, Do you understand that he said right now, he said it's time to prophesy over many people, races, nations, languages, and kings. Do you understand that? I mean, the president of the United States, whether he's whomever he is, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to tell you, he's over us whether you like him or not. And I'm just telling you that it, God can change the heart of the king. He can change the heart, come on, of those that are in authority over if we would just take our place and begin to declare the word of God and begin to say that prophecies are going to come to pass. I mean, right now in Israel, prophecies are coming to pass. Do you know I had an Orthodox Jew want to talk to us because he said we've not ever had conversation with Christians before. And they love the evangelical Christians because we're just weird. Because we love Israel. They don't understand that. They don't understand that we grew up in Sunday school loving Israel. They don't understand that. Because they don't like us. It's true. But he said, but we've come to a, we've come to a, 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 a reconciliation that, you know, Israel has become a nation for just 70 years. It's really pretty young. They're still discovering a whole lot of stuff over there. And he says, but we've come to the uh, realization that the true Christians love them and are for them. He says, we need to have a conversation with each other. And do you know it talks about that in the last days? I was sitting there thinking, while he was talking to the the guys, because we went with a bunch of ministers, you know, them, and I don't ever, I don't ever get in, uh, you know, because they all like to, you know, guys, they like to debate stuff and uh, whatever. And but they didn't want to debate; they just would ask him, "Well, what about this?" and "Well, what about that?" Because he knows the scriptures; they know the canon. I mean, they know it better than I know it. I'm gonna tell you, they study it, study, 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 and so um, it was just interesting. To hear, you know, what he had to say. But do you understand that with all of this happening, it opens a door. There's a door been opened. And it's because the church has been praying. I'll tell you something else that, and you know, and I, I just want to encourage you today. I just want to encourage you that nothing's too small. Nothing's too big for, I mean, you know, God can do whatever he wants to do. And I'm going to tell you, when we hook up with heaven... In our prayers and our, our prophecies, we hook up with heaven. They're going to come to pass. Um, <clears throat> we just did this in our church. <coughs> oh, Well, I, I don't know how long ago now. I really probably need to get the dates, but um, just so that I can tell it accurately. But I'm going to share it with you. We had, uh, the, the kids had mission sent. We were, we were doing a mission Sunday. And... Uh, I had the girl get the the 1040 window, you know, the you know, the all the countries that are closed to the gospel, you know. The number one one was North Korea. The number one one. Do you, you know, okay, so I didn't know that. So we this has been months ago. And uh, so we all the so with the kids what they did is they blew up balloons and wrote the so all the countries that were up there, we had balloon for each one and the kids in the back they wrote the country and so we were gonna, uh, uh, we were praying for the nations, and that, and so the balloons had to come out, and the adults had to pop the balloons so that we were gonna make a way for the gospel in that country. Okay, just a. The kids thought it was fun, and of course, you know, the kids they didn't get to pop the balloons. Parents had to pop the balloons, but anyway, so we handed out a little. The, a little pin, whatever, to pop the balloon, you know. Uh, mine, I think my my country was like Egypt or whatever, and so you know, so we're just we're doing this, and so it was real fun. And uh, but in the process of this, we we were very conscious of the the list in the top three, you know, uh, countries that are closed to the gospel. It's very interesting. So anyway, um, we had uh, then we went into prayer. Uh, for like a, a two-week kind of a deal, and we just corporate prayer. And uh, 
where we just all get together and we're just going to pray whatever the Holy Ghost gives us to pray about. And sometimes we pray in tongues and sometimes the Lord would give us something and somebody or, or a country, you know, sometimes in a country would be impressed on your heart and you pray for them or, or sometimes, you know, uh, uh, just a missionary that we support or something, you know, how you get them on the, on your heart and you say, Oh Lord, I got to pray for them. And so, uh, my husband, uh, we, we were praying and it is the strangest thing. He uh, got up and and as he was praying, going back, he said, I see no line between North and South Korea. That's what he said. He said, I see no line. He says, as a matter of fact, he says, there's not going to be any difference. And the gospel is going to be able to go into North Korea. And he just was, you know, and of course, we're just all, yeah, hallelujah. And, I'm, and there's probably about this many people there at that prayer night. And we were just, when we just started praising God, praising God. And did you know the next week, literally on the TV, we saw North Korea and South Korea guys, the, the shake hands. I said, okay, that's okay. And here's what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, it's not so much, you know, like it wasn't because of us. This has been being prayed for years. Okay. It wasn't because of us, but it was God giving us a token to say, listen, I hear your prayers. I know what's happening. And not just that, that my husband out of the office of a pastor was prophesying that. There's many pastors that are prophesying that. We prophesy things together all the time that we don't know about. And what happened was is he got he we just happened to be in that vein where he prophesied it again and we got to see it happen the next week. That's all. But isn't that incredible? Tell me we don't affect our community and our city and our country. Hallelujah. I want my pastor to be free to speak the word, free to, to declare whatever it is that he needs to declare, whatever God is declaring. And, you know, sometimes he may just declare something over you. Hallelujah. You know, uh, Anthony said something to me last night. I didn't know. I, I remember when he told me. But I was over at a service, I mean, 19 years ago, 20 years ago. And I told the pastor there, I said, you need to watch that couple. You need to keep that. You need to keep your arms around them. Hallelujah. Keep your arms around them. Because Satan, see, he wants to sift us. At the minute, he doesn't want the plan and purpose of God to go out, uh, to go forth. He wants to shut our mouth, to be honest. And I don't want to be a contributor to that. Hallelujah. Do you guys know? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, you know, you just want to be able to have that work. And so in that Revelation 10, 10, where he's talking about this, he says, so he said, th so this is something that's really interesting to me. So, he, so basically he told him to eat the word. So when he ate the word, the, the person has to digest the assignment of God. And then he has to prophesy it or say something again. And uh, someone said it to me this way. God, I want to say this to pastors. God hired your mouth. God hired your mouth. It doesn't belong to you. Something you get from heaven, you need to speak. You need to take God. You need to take that coal of fire. That's been placed on your mouth from Isaiah 6. Hallelujah. And you know, we've heard the stories. The dry bones. We've, we, we've heard the stories. But I'm going to tell you, we can prophesy again. And I think it's time to prophesy again in here. That's what I see. It's time to prophesy exactly what plan and purpose, what God has set you here to do. And you know, and you'll find that out as you continue to walk. As you continue to walk the plan and purpose of God out, as you continue to walk, God will, will, will say things kind of like, you know, we've been praying for five years. And how cool is this that we got to see something happen, you know, within a week. You talk about pumped up. We were all pumped up. What other country can we pray for? <laughs> Come on. God, see, he'll give, you a, he'll give you a token. He'll give you something that helps keep you going. So, um. Tonight, you know what? All I know is tonight, tonight I'm going to tell you because we're praying for a door of veterans to come. And uh, 
We're, I'm praying. I prayed yesterday. I prayed this morning. We teach on it. You guys need to pray about it. And I'm going to tell you, tonight's going to be a blowout. You know, I, I told my pastor friends, I said, you need to get over here. We need to put our arms around Anthony and uh, Juanita, and we just need to believe God with them. Hallelujah. That their candlestick will burn bright. There's a candlestick here. God's put a candlestick, and you need to know what your candlestick is. You know, Joel Osteen knows what his is for. He knows. He gets flack for it. Hey, you're going to get flack for it. Anything you do for God, you're going to get flack for it. So I'm going to, you know, last week our, our, we came in and our whole sanctuary was flooded. And we had people pushing brooms. I mean, I'm so sore. I can't even believe I'm standing up here. We pushing water out, but you know, and everybody said, well, we, pastor, we going to cancel church. We going to cancel church. Well, we go, I just want to know because I think I'm going to take a vacation. No, we don't. There's no vacation from prayer. Come on. So I got on and did me a stupid, stupid little whatever video, you know, and said, hey, just want to let y'all know we're going to have church on Sunday morning. Whether we have in church in the building or out of the building, we're going to have church and we're going to prophesy and, and continue to tell the, the enemy that he doesn't have this territory. Come on. He don't have it. And you ain't going to push me out of town. You're not going to flood me out of town. You're not going to shut my mouth up. I'm not going to quit. See, that's what he wants us to do is quit. And I want you to know for a couple of days we thought about it. You know, because it was overwhelming. Everything we have, everything we own, everything. And we're talking walls are going to have to be redone. We're talking floors got to be. We're talking everything. You know what? And I looked around and I started and I, and, 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 you know, thinking about the work. You know, I mean, come on. Yeah, thinking about the work. And I was going, oh, oh, like this. And then all of a sudden. That devil is not going to shut me up. He is not going to shut us up. We're going to preach the gospel, and the gospel is the good news. Hallelujah. That we don't have, th this is nothing, nothing but a thing right here. Hallelujah. God is going to turn this trial into something so good for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Oh, that the word to go forth. And I'm not going to be intimidated by the enemy. I'm not going to be intimidated. Hallelujah. We're just going to keep moving forward. There's only one way to go anyway. He says, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. He's the finisher. He finishes. Hallelujah. So I just, I just, I don't know what my time is. I'm not used to having a, oh, it's 1215. I can keep going. Okay. <laughs> Mm. Hallelujah. Here's something. Um, and I think I might have said this. Uh, well, I, 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 I'll just. You know, when Mary. Was at the tomb, you know, she was she went to the tomb and man, I was there. It was really it was so cool. Uh, I'm telling you, this little place was so peaceful. Um. We went over, after we saw it, we went over, they have the little uh, tent thing, you know, that you can uh, sit and the pastor can have a service or whatever. And, um, you know, Mary, she didn't recognize Jesus. She didn't recognize him physically. But she recognized the voice. Sometimes we can't, we're not going to see physically exactly what the Lord, you know, is called us to, or what it looks like, you know, because in one day you could be flooded and it's all going to look different. You know, our church is going to look totally different. It's not going to be the same. But she knew the voice. And so I just declare to you that you're going to know the voice. Amen. You're just going to know the voice. And you're going to follow the voice. And it may not look like what you think it's going to look like. But you just follow the voice. And know that it's Jesus. Know that it's God directing your path. Because, you know, God says he goes and makes all the crooked places straight. And he's our rear guard. So we're we're surrounded by him. I love that song that you sang. We're surrounded by him. And so know that we're, if we're surrounded by him, then he's going to guard and protect us. Because he's our rear guard. But he also directs us. And, and, and all we have to do is listen to the voice. Listen to the voice. And as long as we listen to the voice, it doesn't matter what, what's around us. It doesn't matter what it looks like. And so um, 
I just recently, you know, had to had come to that because I had someone say that to me over in Israel. I had a pastor, uh, Bishop Tony Miller, say that to me and Pastor Donnie. He said, I'm telling you that within 90 days, he said, everything's going to change. <laughs> he did. He said, and, and it's not going to look like it's from God. That's what he told us. That's what he told us. He said, it's not going to look like it. He says, but you're going to hear his voice in it. You're going to hear his voice. Amen. And I was sitting there on my little couch <laughs> with 25 blowers <laughs> going on. And all of a sudden I looked and I thought, no, it sure doesn't look like God in here, does it? But I hear his voice saying the new. The new is coming. Something is going to happen you're getting ready to break out of this place. You're getting ready Amen. to break out. Amen. And so the Lord just said to us, and we talked to our contractor, we're believing God, should believe God with us, that we'll be able to have Easter service. But we're going to just have a brand new grand opening Easter service because we're a brand new church. Hallelujah. And you know what? It didn't look like God last week. And the devil tried to scare us. He tried to scare us off, but he ain't going to win. Hallelujah. We're going to allow the gift to keep being proclaimed and, and the word of God to be proclaimed. Hallelujah. Woo! And we'll live to tell the tale <laughs> of the goodness and the graciousness of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He's active and he's working. He's active and working right now. And he speaks to us. And he'll tell you to do something that is just really not, uh, doesn't look right to people around you. You know, I found out that my <laughs> some of my worst critics are my family. Because <laughs> they can't see it. But it's okay, as long as you know that you know. I had a girl one time tell me, well, Pastor, what do I do? I said, well, honey, I, I can't tell you what to do. I said, but I can tell you this. I, I believe in you enough to know that you can hear the voice of God. Yeah. I said, so what's the God telling you to do? Yeah. And if you can look at me right in the eye and say, God told me to do this, then I'm for you. I'm with you. Hallelujah. I'll hook up with you. So we, it's time in this place is a new season. I see a new season coming. I see it's new. It's not, it's not the same. No, no, it's not the same. The changing of the guard has been done. Amen. That's what I see. Amen. The change of the guard is is have been done, and so now there will be some fresh assignments. Whew. Fresh assignments. Some may look like uh, what you've dreamt, and others may not. But know that God has it all planned. And all you have to do is walk out the plan. That's all you have to do. Amen. And uh, uh, I believe that uh, God is is speaking, and there's there's some things happening in the spirit here that people can't see. There's some walls being broken. There's some uh, hallelujah. There's some strongholds. Uh, there's there's been a you know, it's kind of like Daniel. Uh, I, I, that's kind of what I get in my heart. It's kind of like Daniel. You know, he says, I've prayed. He said, and, and, and God answered the very day that you prayed, but there was opposition. And we had to fight through that opposition. The, the, you know, the angels, you know, sometimes they, they have to fight through the opposition. They win. I mean, we win, but we have to persevere. We got to keep going. We got to keep walking. We got to know. And, it, it's, and it's really interesting. You got to know that this is what God's told you to do. Um, I know there's been some things that God told us to do that he's told me and Pastor Donnie to do. If we had known what was waiting on us, we wouldn't have done it. But now looking back, hindsight, we had to do it. You know, it's kind of like Paul. He, he was, uh, uh, what, what was the, uh, island that he got stranded on? You know, that had to happen. Sometimes there's just certain things that have to happen. When we get to heaven, we'll ask God about it. But there's some things that have to happen. And I'm telling you that, that your, your ship is turning. Your, your ship is turning. And you know, a, a ship doesn't turn sharp. 
And it, and it takes it a while. But I see that. I can see that in the spirit. I see the ship turning. And uh, I see God moving. And and just like I said yesterday, there will be people that, you know, go along the street that just turn in here. They're just going to say, I don't know why. You know, the Holy Spirit can do that. He can do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit can do that. And not just you, but I think that you are, uh, because the Spirit that's on you, you're going to bring such a community uh, uh, of the pastors that are in this area, you know, because we're together. We, we're working together. We're all working in the field of God. You know, it's just like my husband said one day, he said, Lord, why would you want us to plant a church right over here when there's this church and that church and this church and that church? And God said to him, he said, listen, I've got many combines. He said, you just need to till yours. And you need to help those other men, whatever they need. And I see that. I see that. And because of that love, I'm going to tell you, because of that love that you have and that and the heart that you have, God is going to honor that. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm just going to tell you he's going to honor it. Hallelujah. He's going to honor that. And I want to let you know that not many people, not many people have a genuine pastor. I mean, you know. But you, you guys got one. And you should cherish it. You're not without a leader. You should cherish your leader. You should cherish him. Hallelujah. Pray for him every day. Just put put a little note somewhere, you know. Just pray for him every day. A door utterance. God, give him a door utterance. Give him some revelation today. Give him some fresh uh, insight of the word of God today. You know, Lord... Let him speak into my life. Every Sunday when I come in, let him speak into my life. I thank you that the, that the word of God, it changes me from the inside out. I receive the word as it's from God, not from him. I receive the word. Hallelujah. And as you guys respect that and you, and you do that, you watch. You watch this place. You just watch. You watch. People will come. People will come. Hallelujah. And uh, and the the stigma uh, or, or something I guess that might be the right word the stigma of that this is the same church is not going to be there no more. You know what I mean? Like it's new. And I'm not saying anything bad and different. I'm just saying it's just new. It's just different. It's it's not the same. It, it's different leadership. It's different. And so sometimes you have to wait time. It takes time for that, you know, for that to change when transition has happened. It takes time. It's okay. But just keep on keeping on. Hallelujah. I just believe God. I just keep on keeping on. And then and then what you are and what the candlestick needs to be. It allow the pastor to pro prophesy it into wh what it needs to be. You know, uh, we just recently, you know, we've been, we, I've not been a pastor for very long, a senior pastor, only for five years. So I'm a baby. <laughs> I'm learning. But you, sometimes you got to learn what you do. And when you find it, then you do it. You do it to the best of your ability. Praise God. So there's going to be a niche for you guys in this community. There's going to be something that and I think even uh, she, uh, she was telling me last night about that you're you're known as the church with the backpacks I want to be known as the church with the backpacks I think that's the coolest thing but you know we want to do what God wants us to do and you have no idea the people that you've already touched you have no idea and and the thing is is that we don't go we don't look at numbers we, you know, pastors do. It's just, I don't know why we do it. Because we want people, we want, we want to give out to as many as, as we can. But it's not about numbers. It's really not. It's about relationship. Amen. It is about relationship. And relationships are built over time. They're just built over time. And so God, you know, Jesus, he didn't say go and make converts, did he? That hurts my denomination. Well, they get me. They'd be mad at me for saying that. No, he, Jesus, is is interested in disciples. Because guess what? You have somebody that you need to touch. 
you have somebody that you need to have a door of utterance for. That's how that works. The pastor has a door of utterance. You have a door of utterance. Hallelujah. Then we can bring the harvest in. So I believe that you guys are just set right here just to bring in the harvest. Hallelujah. And I believe tonight you will, you know, Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem, tarry there in upper room until you receive power from on high to go out. And uh, I love John Wesley. You know, he's one of my favorite. I'm so glad to be a Methodist. I didn't know I was Holy Ghost. I always tell everybody, I'm not Assembly of God. I'm Methodist. I said, really? I said, yeah. I said, you know, John Wesley, his mama, he, she said, now I'm going to pray for a while. I'm going to put my apron. She put her apron over her head and she'd pray in the Holy Ghost. They said that John Wesley and his brother would ride on the horses that go in from town to town to preach the gospel. But they, they said that, uh, one, one said that they saw him, they would be jabbering on their horses. Well, you know, that's what the whole fire is there in the Methodist church. You know, that fire that goes up in there. That's the Holy Ghost. So I told my grandma one day. I was afraid to tell my grandma that I spoke in tongues, you know. This is just a side note. I'm done, but this is a good side note. She said, uh, I said, well, Grandma, I just was going to tell you, because I call my grandma every, every day practically, and I said, well, do you know that I speak in tongues? She goes, well, I kind of figured you did. I said, you did? Why? She says, well, she says, back when they'd have revivals over at the Assembly of God Church, they'd ask me to come over and play the, the organ. I'm like, really? You've been in those revivals? She said, oh, yeah, they were rolling everywhere. <laughs> I said, so you'd be okay if I prayed for you in tongues? And she said, why? She'd say, why, yes. And so, uh, but we're in it together, you know, and we want to do our part. So whatever our part is. That's what we want to do. Amen. And we want to hook up with others so that we can help them. And if we all do it together, hallelujah, this whole area be saved. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Anthony, I'm excited about tonight. You know, my pastor said Sunday night's Holy Ghost night. You come expecting the Holy Ghost to move tonight. And uh, we've prayed for a door utterance and my Lord have mercy. I don't have any idea how my husband's going to come here today tonight but i guarantee you he comes here excited <laughs> so praise the lord <laughs> Woo. he's uh incapacitated a little bit praise god god is good glory to god yeah shut that idea Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. to God. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, we just moved by the Holy Ghost here. So, Anthony, come over here and let me pray for you because the Lord's doing something. So, you know, um, the Holy Ghost comes on us for, uh, well, first off, the anointing, uh, the Bible says, the anointing breaks every yoke. And uh, so, so this is really a pretty awesome responsibility. Some of the things that I've said, and uh, and uh, you know, and when the Holy Ghost is present, we want to move. We want to we want to step out. We want to uh, you know do what He wants us to do. And so, uh, Hallelujah. Um, so I'm I don't know what I'm gonna do. Just I'm gonna tell you right off. I don't know. I'm gonna pray for him. I'm gonna lay my hands on him. And uh, how the gifts work are the Lord giving me a word or something. I've already given him, I've already given a word for the church. He's just accepting it is what's happening, really. Uh, and uh, because it's bigger than him. You know, it's bigger than we are. And uh, every leader gets to the place where, you know what, God, I can't do this. You're going to have to do it. And that's what's going to happen here. God's going to have to do it, right? Because it's pretty big. But um, so anyway, I'm just going to lay my hands on him. Because Paul says, I'm gonna, I want to come and I, I have a gift I want to impart to you. I, I have something on the inside. So that same spirit of faith that's on the inside, it's transferable. And as we lay, lay hands on people, then they can receive it. They don't receive it in their, they receive it in the inner man, the inner man where, where who we really are. Hallelujah, the, 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 the spirit of man, right? It's the candlestick of the Lord. So God, I just right now, I come into agreement with my brother. <laughs> 
I thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit to touch him. Oh, that you are giving him, you're increasing his capacity. <laughs> you're stretching his uh, mental capacity right now, Father. I thank you, Lord, that he's able to dream big. I thank you, Father God, that he uh, is able to receive uh, from the gift of God today. I thank you, God, that you would just impart to him a great spirit of faith that would rise up on the inside, that he would boldly speak your word, boldly speak what you've called him to do, boldly speak. Hallelujah. Not afraid, not ashamed. Hallelujah. I thank you right now, Lord, that you even now that you're working and you've been working, you've given him some things, but there's more stuff. There's more stuff. The Holy Ghost said there's more stuff. There's more things, and you're going to have to write them down, and sometimes you're going to have to write them down faster. Hallelujah. You're just going to have to you, – you won't be able to stay. You'll have to just get up and get a pen, and it'll just be a weird situation for you, but you just have to get up and get a pen. Hallelujah. And write it down so you don't forget. Hallelujah. So, Father, I thank you, God, that you're working this in him and through him, and I thank you, Lord, that you will anoint his mouth anoint his words all oh, that he is uh, uh, anointing is increased upon him father I thank you right now that there is an impartation of faith <laughs> hallelujah to do those things that seem impossible to do the things that seem impossible for man but with God they're possible hallelujah for the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. It means he don't change his mind. Hallelujah. And he's prepared you. <laughs> you've been prepared. Hallelujah. Everything that you've gone through leads up to this day. You've been prepared. It's time to walk and step out. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Father, I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dreams and visions. Mm. Yeah. Dreams and visions. Hallelujah. And you're calling. He's calling people to you. To help you. Because we, we can't do it by ourselves. But he's calling leaders. He's calling people to help. Uh, Hallelujah, Father. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit is working. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is working. Mm. <laughs> See, that's just a the peace of God. <laughs> a peace of God. Hallelujah. See, it's easy for him. Oh, well, so did he. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mm. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Lord. Mm. 